High Grade Clanch. Hey, what's up again, everybody? Robert184, 2 rs 2 bs GundamReviews.net, and you've already seen the unbox of the High Grade Clanch, which everybody needs more of. So now it's time to take a look at the completed parts before you can see them all put together, transformed, and how it stacks up as the third generation grunt. When it's all put together, you're going to get all of the things that you see here, some to more extent than others that are going to be put together. Three extra manipulators, a cool looking weapon there. There's the arm that's actually going to have the uh, weapons attached onto the back. The chest there, the visor is separated here. You can see that this is going to be different on the Clanch Custom. The legs have a very interesting way to assemble them and the knees are still going to be covered up Genoa style there. You're also going to be getting a shield, the just the one beam saber though. Three parts and you're going to have two different there for the landing gear. And again, whenever you're cutting off pink parts and you've got that discoloration if you're a lazy modeler like me, two bucks for a real touch marker can make a big difference. I wasn't crazy about the Genoa's one's leg, but I've got to say that the three is a really cool take on that while still definitely looking modernized. Nice big chunks of grey there that are going to show through. You can see that when you attach this together, you're still going to have this separated, but because you're going to put on this large knee part here, you're not actually going to notice that very much. And you can see that that's going to just seal everything up up there. If you want to put some lining on there, I've cut it on the back, should probably add it to the front. And the hips on the front, they're going to look good. When you're putting this together, you're going to put in these small white parts here, and you've got to slide them up, and you should get a satisfying click sound. That's going to show that it's all the way in, and then you just take this foot here, and you can see that it's going to be able to bend like this, and look a little bit ballerina-ish. The waist section is looking almost exia nude-ish here, and you can see that in terms of the moving parts, you're not going to be getting any for the hips, which we've sort of come to be used to. You can see the attachment point that's not going to have a cover there. But on the plus side, you are going to have these thrusters that are going to move up and down back there, though not independently. And they do have grey seals there, so you can sort of set them apart just in terms of the colours. But the chest section here is a lot of fun for a couple reasons. First of all, you're going to have the shoulders that are going to do the quality up and down and forward and back slightly there. You can see that you're going to have this familiar pop-up thing, which we've seen on the H2. I wonder how it's going to work and if it's going to be collapsing all the time. But it's more just the details here, where it's going to look like a very fuselage chest there. And you're going to have some grey seals underneath, and when you put on this big chunky white part there, it's actually going to re reveal a little bit of the vents on the inside, which I think is definitely a plus. Down here you're going to have a unique shape, you can see that that's just on a polycap there. It's not going to rotate around though, so you're not going to get too much movement out of that. But it's this back part that I'm not too sure how exactly this is going to work. It doesn't fit in here all that securely, if you see it's just sort of got a hook mechanism that you're going to pop that inside or so it says. It looks like you can attach the rifle and various things in there. But it's not all that secure, and I suppose that you are going to be using this to move it up and down in the transformation. Hopefully it's not going to be this kind of thing that's going to fall off and end up you having to keep it in a ziplock so it doesn't disappear forever. But it's the arms where I think they're very, very deceptively simple, and yet obviously a lot of thought went into their construction from Bandai. You can see the way they're just going to attach on that poly cap there, and you're able to move this part around, and also this thruster on the side is going to move somewhat independently there. It's going to have a nice grey seal on the inside, which is going to match what we already saw on the back. You can rotate that around and you're going to have a very interesting looking elbow guard slash pink part there, which is only going to give you, though, a 90 degree bend, so don't expect anything fancy there for arm articulation. But you can see that it's going to have the back, and if you take a look at this part, it's going to look pretty good there with a big chunk of grey exposed through the hole there. Lining opportunities where I went with black, it looks like, maybe brown. And you can see the grey on the inside there, if you want to put in some little tick marks, you can. You've also got more vents at the end, so when you put those on there, it's going to fit that, definitely fill out the elbow, not make it look so bandagey. Still show a little bit of grey, which is nice, and more importantly, you're going to see some grey underneath, so it's not just going to be a hollow pink part, which you can imagine an AG clanch would have had. And it's nice that you're going to be getting the five different kinds of hands. You're going to get one dynamic one, two weapon holding ones, and two fists, and it looks like you can use this in the transformation that you may have to be popping this off and rotating it around. In terms of simple, futuristic looking space weapons though, I've got to say that this one is pretty fantastic actually overall. In terms of moving parts, you're going to be able to move this great part all the way forward this much, and at the back you shouldn't really be moving this around too much it looks like, but you can see that that's going to fit comfortably into the hand and then seal up on the top with a satisfying click. The fact that you've got the grey and the pink there and this little grey separator there between the white parts is a very nice touch. I put some black ink in there from a Gundam marker if you can make it out, not a lining pen. And if you wanted to put some on the inside of the white, there's lots of little tick marks there, so you could add something that would make it look very Cerebi Gunnish. 
Nothing fancy for the shield there, and you can see that my lining is already starting to come off, so use proper ink, and I'm sure you won't have that problem. Again, nice touch though, that it, for what is going to be exposed around the forearm, you can see where it's just going to attach in there. That when you do that, you still are going to see chunks of grey up at the top and going down below, including that slightly dynamic cut, which is a nice touch. And if you take the beam saber, you can plug it in down there, which is going to look nice and white there. This is just going to be a standard one, which is going to be straight and of the flat variety. Love that they give you landing gear here, and you can see that this one's going to be symmetrical, and these ones are looking pretty good too. And you'll probably want to put the right one on the correct side there, and you can put a little bit of lining into the tires, or even better, paint them up in black. I was a big fan of the Genoas 1's head because it had that nice little white part there underneath to go along with the clear blue that goes very well with the pink. Unfortunate that the Genoas 2, which was modeled very much on Wolf's Genoas custom there, is just going to have that ugly white seal which is going to cover everything up. Of course, the Pro Painter will be able just to fix that up, but the clench does a much better job. As it's going to give you all of the best parts from the other ones you can see there combined. My favorite one, though, just has to be that you've got that white piece, which is going to go all the way through. So you're going to have some white ears with some fine detailed pink to go zooming all around that. And also on the inside, yes, somebody said they can't unsee it, but you've got a Hutto face there, which is looking pretty cheesy. Shiny metallic green there on the inside, the gray there. These are a couple seals, and you'll notice that they're not going to fit on all that flushly, but then again, it's not going to matter when you cover it up. Nice green camera lenses there on the front and the back. So if you do take this blue piece and attach it on, you may be able to make out a little bit of huddo, depending on how you look at it. But more importantly, the combination of the pink, the white, and that blue with the res recessed uh, gray parts on the inside and the gray green camera lens. I think this is one of the best takes on the Insecticons that we've ever seen in Gundams, and definitely almost too cool for a grunt suit, I'd say. Lots of fun putting this together, and lots of great connections. It's got back to the old Genoas 1, the Genoas 2, and you can see the H2 influences in it. From everything from the shield to the rifle to the fact that you're going to have that neck, col neck collapse, uh, collapse up and down, sorry, to go along with the landing gear and those very unique legs. I think those have got to be my favorite parts. Anyway, just building this up has made me very excited to put it together, so don't forget to stick around to see the mobile suit and the transformation. And as always, let me know what you think of the video, the MS, and everything else. Anyway, always love to hear from you. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Now, now, there have been much worse beards seen in Gundam before.